Westbrook Online, welcome, welcome, welcome. We are so glad that you have uh, decided to join us today in our time of worship and teaching. And I hope and pray that as we go through this service today, God will encourage you, uh, God will bless you, God will speak to you, and uh, when the service is over, uh, you'll be glad uh, that you joined us. As we crank into a new season, as we move into uh, the fall season, uh, things are going to be changing a little bit in your world with all the back to school and, and all the fall things that are going to begin to take place. But what's not changing is our commitment to you, uh, even though you are a part of our online congregation, our online family. And as we say every week, as we get ready to move into our time of worship, we want you to do your best to stay connected to us. Contact us. Let us know that you're part of our online congregation. And we'll do our best uh, to minister to you, to encourage you, to pray for you, uh, to bless you as we share together in, in this time uh, of, of worship and trusting Christ with all that we have. So you make sure that you do that. Find whatever way you can to connect with us and let us know that you're watching and let us know that you're a part of our family. Uh, before our service ends today, take a moment, if you will, and uh, uh, remember the great sacrifice that Jesus has made for us. Uh, in our on, uh, live services, we take communion together. We would love for you to share in that as well. Find a piece of uh, bread, find a cup of juice, and take some time to reflect upon what Jesus has done for you. And then we wanna encourage you to be a part of our ministry as a financial steward as well. Uh, you can give online, you can go to our website and find the information about that, but we greatly appreciate uh, your engagement. Wherever you are in this area, in this region, or in this world, uh, we're grateful that you're a part of our online family. Yeah, let me pray, and then we want you to enjoy this service. Would you bow your heads? Lord, as we come to you today, as we move into a time of worship, God, we pray that you'll be glorified, you'll be blessed, and that God, uh, through the words of songs, through the words of the message, that God, you'll speak to us, that we might be the kind of people that you want us to be. So use this service for your grace and for your glory. In Jesus we pray, amen and amen. Enjoy the service today.
Welcome. My name is Seth Rempel. I'm one of the pastors here at Westbrook, and it's great to be with you today as we continue in our series called Now What? And I love the title of this series. It's, it's a question I often ask myself or, or ask someone else is, okay, now what? What do we do? Like, I've heard or I know that something happened, so I know the what. So, like, what did someone tell me? What did I read? What did I see? And, and then from what, the natural inclination is to think or to ask, okay, so what? Or, or why does the what matter? And, and is this something that affects me? Is this something that affects somebody else uh, or multiple people? And, and then that leads to the question, okay, now what? What do I do with this information? Uh, what, what can I expect? Is there something I need to do? Do I need to change some of my own thoughts or, or actions or behaviors? Is, do I need to talk to somebody else? Do I need to get other people involved? Is, is God calling me to do something? And, and these are all different questions that I find myself asking. And, and maybe not in every situation, maybe not exactly those questions every single time, but the process is, is something like that for me, and, and I'm assuming it's like that for, for most of us. And see, we do this in our relationships with people, whether it's a family members, friends, loved ones, coworkers, neighbors, you know, we do this in our, in our jobs. We do this in, in so many different areas of our lives, right? There's a, there's a what, and then a so what, so like why, why does it matter to me? Do I need to do something? And then a, a now what, okay, what do I need to do? What do I do with this information. And so it's great to be in this series because this is what we do when we read the Bible, right? We, we read the what. And we ask ourselves or we ask God, okay, so what? Why does it matter? Why is this important? Why am I reading this? And then we ask, okay, now what? What do I do with this information? Although admittedly, some of us, right, we're, we're afraid to ask the question, now what? Because if we're being honest with ourselves, we know that that God is calling us to action. God is calling us to do something, but we don't always like doing what we hear or see, think that God is calling us to do, and we don't necessarily like making changes, right? We, we think we're doing all right. We feel comfortable where we are and, and how things are going, and so we're afraid if we ask God now what, that God will actually call us to do something, to make some changes, to do something different. And so as we We've read through the Gospels and we see that Jesus, Jesus came from heaven to earth, right? He walked and talked with people. He, the creator spent time with his creation, right? And, and not only that, but he led them, he empowered them, he equipped them. And then when he died and, and he rose again, he went back to heaven and the disciples are like, okay, now what? And as we go through the, the book of Acts, we've been going through the book of Acts, we see Jesus answer this question of now what? And he did this when he sent the Holy Spirit to live in, to equip, to empower believers to do the good works that God has called them to do. See, through the power of the Holy Spirit, we see the big C church, the body of believers growing and expanding. We see people sharing about Jesus through their words and, and through their actions. And so this morning, today I've been given the privilege of, of sharing with you just a, just a small section of the book of Acts. You know, we'll start in, in Acts chapter 16, verse 1, and, and we'll go all the way through Acts chapter 18, verse 28. And some of you are like, wait, did you say, say what I think you said? You're like, wait, hey, don't you normally just do a, a few verses? And, and well, you know, let me ask it this way. How many of you have ever seen the movie 101 Dalmatians? Okay, it was a pretty good movie, right? Well, hey, there's only 101 verses between these three chapters, so you don't have anything else going on, so we have plenty of time, right? <laughs> well, don't worry. I won't read every single word, uh, word for word, but there's, there's some things in here that I want to highlight that stood out to me as I was reading and as I was studying uh, through these chapters, and, and I want to encourage you to go and read it for yourself. Read every word. See exactly what is happening here, because there's a lot of great things happening. So if you have your Bibles, you have the Bible app, go ahead and open up to Acts chapter 16, all right? And as we get into Acts chapter 16, you're going to see some things here, right? You're going to see maybe a heading that says Paul's second missionary journey. Or, or if you're in the, the Bible app, it says Timothy joins Paul and Silas, and I am not there yet, but uh, Pastor Mont shared with us last week uh, from Acts chapter 15. He talked about Paul and Barnabas, how they were working together, doing ministry together, serving together, and then they had a disagreement and it was such a bad disagreement that they ended up splitting ways. But that didn't stop them from continuing in the work of the Lord. No, the, each of these men led them to invite somebody else, to bring somebody else along with them, to do the work of the Lord with them. 
See, God is growing the team. God is growing his team. God's people who are called to do God's work, to share God's message, continued to do so. And so that leads me to our big theme for these chapters and what they're all about is growing with the team. See, we'll continue to see God grow his team, grow his kingdom. And we'll see how Paul continues to grow with the team, how different people grow with the team. Because you see, we're not meant to do this life alone. We're stronger when we work together. We accomplish more together than we can on our own. Paul and Barnabas, they understood this. Though they didn't see eye to eye about who and what their exact calling was, they continued to grow the team and grow with others. At the end of Acts chapter 15, we see Barnabas and Mark set off for where God was calling them. And we see Paul, he chooses Silas, and and they were sent by other believers to go, to share God's message, to continue to grow with the team. And right away in Acts chapter 16, we see Paul and Silas connect with Timothy. Again, the team is growing. They're growing with the team. And and throughout the next several chapters, we'll see the various places that Paul and and Silas and Timothy go and the people that they meet. And I'll I'll do my best to to quickly highlight just a few of the many, many things that are happening here because there is a lot. Again, hopefully you've been reading along with us uh, in this series, reading through the book of Acts. And, And if you haven't read already, to go back and read Acts 16 through 18 for yourself and see what stands out to you. See what what God is speaking to you and and sharing with you. Uh, And just hopefully today you'll hear some things that'll kind of pique your interest to go back and and check it out. Because as these three men are going, they're following the leading of the Holy Spirit. They're going from town to town to strengthen and encourage the churches. and, And they're going to share the good news of Jesus Christ, seeing people come to faith daily. And in Acts chapter 16, verse 6, we see that Paul and his companions traveled throughout the region of Phrygia and Galatia. How many ever heard of the, the book of Galatians before, right? The Galatian church, having been kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word in the province of Asia. See, as they're they're going along, it's not about their work. It's about listening to and, and following the leading of the Holy Spirit. These men are called to do the work of the Lord in sharing the good news of of Jesus Christ. These men, they've been sent. They've been called. They've answered the call to go. And and in going, they're not going alone. They're not going to do what they want to do, when they want to do it, where they want to do it, how they want to do it. No, they're, they're following the leading of the Holy Spirit. They're going where God is calling them to go. And that's the now what for us today. As we we follow God, as we draw closer to him, as we read his word, we get to know him, we're called to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. And so that leads me to the first point for today, to, to write this in your notes. As we grow with the team, we are called to follow the Holy Spirit. We're called to follow the Holy Spirit. And sometimes it's hard for us to talk about the Holy Spirit. We don't fully understand it. Uh, but as we, we read the word, we understand and we see the Holy Spirit more and more. And and you're like, well, how do I follow the Holy Spirit? Like, I believe in Jesus. I've been following God. How do I follow the Holy Spirit? How do I know where the Spirit is leading, where the Spirit is calling me? And, you know, what I typically do is I point people to Galatians. You know, we just talked about Galatians, right? Galatians chapter five, starting in verse 13 through through verse 25. And, And basically, You'll see here that if you love Jesus, if you believe that Jesus died and, and he took on the, the punishment that your sins deserved, if, if you believe that Jesus rose again, you, you've been baptized and you've received the forgiveness of your sins, you received the gift of the Holy Spirit. This is something I've talked about in, in, in a previous message, so I'm not gonna get too much further into depth than that, but, but if you write down the book, write down Galatians chapter five, right next to this, follow the Holy Spirit, and you'll see and read more about what it means to to be of the Spirit, to follow the Spirit. But I want to highlight Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 through 25, where Paul says this, he said, but the fruit of the Spirit is this, it's it's love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, and against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have been crucified, have crucified the flesh with its passions and its desires. And so since we live by the what? The Spirit... Let us keep in step with the Spirit. And some of you who serve in our, in our kids' ministry, you started singing the Fruit of the Spirit song right away, and that song is gonna be stuck on and repeat in your head for days and days. And if you haven't heard it yet, just talk to one of our kids' ministers. They'll, they'll, they'll get you hooked on to it, right? But as you draw closer to God, the Holy Spirit begins to work in your life. 
right? He reminds you of God's word. He guides you along the way. He begins to produce this, this fruit within you of love, joy, peace, patience, all these things that he begins to produce in you. And you begin to follow him and, and follow his leading. And as we continue reading through Acts chapter 16, 17, and 18, we see Paul, Timothy, and Silas following the leading of the Holy Spirit. We see them rely on the Holy Spirit to, to help them share the good news of Jesus Christ. And one night Paul has a vision of a man from Macedonia. He's begging, please come and, and help us. So they took that as a sign from God through the Holy Spirit. And so they left to go to Macedonia to, to share the good news of Jesus Christ with, with Gentiles. <gasps> Shocking, because they had been serving and ministering to Jews mostly, but now they're taking the word beyond their area. And what's kind of cool for me as I was reading this and I, was, I noticed something, and, and maybe some of you notice it as you're, as you're looking at it, uh, but the, the author of the book of Acts switches from they were going, they were doing this, to we went. And it was at this time that Luke, the author of the book of Acts, joined the, the team of Paul, Silas, and, and Timothy. Again, the, the team is growing, is growing with the team. And on their way to Macedonia, they went through a couple places, even staying for a few days in a city called Philippi. Some of you may remember there's a book of the Bible called Philippians. Right? And as they're on their way, they continue to minister to people to strengthen and encourage and grow the big C church. And they're planting churches all around. Just as Jesus ministered to people on the way, right? we see this example from Paul and Timothy and Silas and, and Luke. And we see them following the Holy Spirit. We see them following the examples of Jesus. We see them following the examples of others before them that God used. And along the way, they ministered to people. They encouraged, they strengthened, and led others to Christ. And that leads me to the second point for today, that as we grow with the team, we're called to minister to people. Along the way, Paul, Silas, Timothy, Luke, they ministered to people. They shared the word of God. They shared the good news of the hope of Jesus Christ. They shared with crowds of people and they shared with individuals. And as you read through, especially these three chapters, a lot of different names and, and places. And, and sometimes the names are easy to read and pronounce like Paul and Silas and Timothy and Luke. I like those names, right? Sometimes there's names like you know, Phrygia, I think is how you say it. And it's hard, and sometimes I just want to skip over those names because I stumble, and then I get this confused and distracted. But see, names are important. Why? Because people are important, right? Each of us has a name, a name our parents gave us. Some of us have names our, that we don't like that our parents gave us, and, and some of us, we like our names, but we, our names identify us, and our names are important because each of us are individuals. And, and while I love reading the Bible, seeing the different names, and, and these are people, these are real-life people. These aren't just made-up stories, Right, people like Lydia. We see, we read, Lydia was a, a dealer in purple cloth, and sometimes we glance over those small little details thinking they're just a small detail, but, but if we stop and we look at it and we understand the importance of this, like in those times, purple was not an easy color to get. It wasn't an easy color to make. And so because it wasn't easy to get and make, it, it, it was not cheap. So it was reserved for people, mostly royalty, and people with lots of money. And so Lydia, is a, she's a good businesswoman. She's a business woman. You catch that? Because in this day and age, in this time, it's a, it's a man's world, right? And, and here she is, a businesswoman doing great things, doing good things. And she responded to the gospel message of Jesus Christ. And because of her openness and her reception to God, she in her household heard and received the message of Jesus and were baptized into faith. And then we, we keep reading and, and we run into this, this, uh, this other lady. We don't, we don't know her name, but we know she was a fortune teller. And she was obviously possessed by an evil spirit who annoyed Paul so much. Yes, that is the words that are used in, in verse 18. That it, she annoyed them so much that Paul cast the evil spirit out of her. Well, and of course, that upset her owners because here they are making money off of this fortune teller, but they end up throwing Paul and Silas into prison. And you're like, man, that's such a great reward. Follow God and go to prison. Share the good news of Jesus Christ and go to prison. We're all like, yes, please, can we do that? Right, but even in that, Paul and Silas stayed faithful. They trusted God. They trusted his calling in their life so much that even in prison, they were praying and they were singing to God and, and people in the prison were hearing them and they were ministering to people in that place. 
And it can be hard, it can be discouraging. We face so many different things in our life, so many different challenges that we can be discouraged. But wherever we are, whatever we're going through, we can minister to people in those places and in those times. And we continue reading and suddenly there was a massive earthquake and the the doors to the prison opened and the chains fell off the prisoners and they could have gone free, no problem. Talk about a movement of God. God clearly moved. And the jailer, he saw the doors open. He assumed all the prisoners had escaped and so he was about to take his own life because he knew. He knew that if these prisoners got out, it was his head on a plate. But Paul and Silas and the other prisoners, they they were still there. And this jailer, he was so shocked. He'd heard their prayers. He heard them praying. He knew why they were in jail. And he couldn't believe they were still there. They had the opportunity to go. And so he knew there was something different about these guys. And and he wanted what they had. And in Acts chapter 16, verse 30, he asked the best question anybody can ask. He said, what must I do to be saved? Man, I, I love it when people ask this question. What must I do? And Paul and Silas, they say this. They say, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. See, the jailer believed and he was saved and he was baptized. He and his whole household believed and were baptized. His his household wasn't baptized because of his belief, but because he believed, his family saw and heard, they had the opportunity to receive what he received and they believed and received it and they were all baptized because of their faith. And see, this, this reminds me of the passage in Romans chapter 10. Starting in verse nine, it says this. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, if you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Because it is with your heart that you believe and you're justified. It's with your mouth that you profess your faith and, and you're saved. And, and as scripture says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. For there's no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. And I love this. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But this is the part, this next part. I want you to hear it. I want you to see it. I want you to underline it in your Bibles. Romans 10, starting in verse 14. But how, how then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent as it is written? How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. See, Paul and Silas, they were sent and they preached the good news of Jesus Christ. And just like Paul and Silas, each of us has been called to minister to people. We've been called to bring the good news of Jesus Christ to people around us wherever we go. But how? How can people believe in someone they've not heard of? You know, we often think we live in a society that that knows about Jesus. They may have heard about Jesus, or they may think they know something about Jesus, but they don't know about Jesus. They haven't heard about Jesus. And how? How can they hope to hear without someone, someone sharing with them? See, as we read through God's word, we see that we are all called, right? We have all been sent to minister to people. My calling as a pastor is to equip you, to empower you to share the good news of Jesus Christ with everyone that you come in contact with, because I'm not going to be able to come in contact with everyone that you come in contact with, but we are all called to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Does that mean we all have to quit our jobs going to full-time ministry? No, that's not what it means. Because see, God calls everyone to a different job. God equips each of us differently. He puts us in different places for different reasons to minister to different people. There are some people that you'll be able to minister to that I will never have the opportunity to do so. And so that leads me to the third point for today, that as we grow with the team, we are called to be ready. Called to be ready as you follow God, as you share Christ with others. Be ready. Be ready for what? Be ready to go. Be ready to go where God leads. Be ready to talk to people that God brings along your path. Be ready to share Christ with someone. Be be ready to share why Christ is important to you. Be ready. I love what Peter, you know, you may have heard of the disciple Peter before. 
In 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15, he says this as a reminder and encouragement to his readers. He says, always, always be prepared, always be ready to give an answer to everyone, anyone and everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. Just as Paul and Silas, they were ready in prison to give an answer to this man. What must I do to be saved? When someone asks you, what, what is the difference about you? Why? Why do you act the way you act? Why do you talk the way you talk? Why do you have this hope and this peace and this joy about you? Because see, we have reason to have great hope because of who Jesus Christ is, because of what he has done. Does that mean we have to be ready to answer every single question that every single person is ever going to ask us? <laughs> well, if it does, then I'm, I'm in deep trouble because I forget more things than I can remember every day. A lot of times in a conversation, I'll be like, I, you know what? I, I don't know. Honestly, I, I, I don't have an idea, but I, I would love to help you find an answer. Or here's, here's kind of what I, I think and know, but I, I can't tell you that that's, that's exactly what it is, but let's, let's find out together. And see, it's better for us to be honest about not knowing something rather than pretending like you know it all, you have it all together. Sometimes the best thing we can do to share Christ with someone is to be ready to say, hey, I, I don't know that, but what I do know is this. I know what Christ has done in my life. I know what he has done for me. I know what he's continuing to do in me, through me, around me. I know what God is continuing to do in people around me. I see God at work, and this is why I believe. This is why I have the hope, the joy, the peace that I have. It reminds me of the old song. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. That is our hope. Our hope is built on Jesus Christ, not on us, not on what we've done, not on, on what some pastor or some expert or some friend has told us. No, our hope is in Jesus Christ. Be ready to answer with that hope. Be ready to go where the Spirit leads. Be ready to minister to who the Holy Spirit leads you to you or leads you to. All throughout the, these three chapters of Acts 16, 17, and 18, we see the Holy Spirit leading these men of God to do to so many different people. And along the way, believers were there to receive them and encourage them and support them and, and help the team grow and, and share their hope with new believers. In fact, in Acts chapter 17, we see Paul and Silas, they travel to a place called Thessalonica. Maybe you've heard of 1 and 2 Thessalonians before. Here they are proclaiming Christ to Jews, to Gentile, to men and women. Why is that important? Because this is something unique and different in this time. The good news is for everyone. But guess what? Not everyone was happy to see Paul and Silas. As a Christ follower, everyone is not always going to be happy to see you, to hear from you to receive the hope that you have. So be ready. When I say be ready, be ready for opposition from believers as well and non-believers. Because see, Paul was ready. Paul and Silas, they were ready. They were able to speak to so many people in so many different places, in so many different ways, places where, where they didn't belong. They were invited into because of their love, joy, hope, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, self-control, right? Because they were ready because they were respectful and gracious, doors continued to open for them. And doors were closed to them because not everyone was happy to receive them and see them and hear from them. But as we see, growing with the team, they were, they were ready to continue to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. When we get into chapter 18, we see Paul, he's, he's going to Corinth. First and second Corinthians, anybody, right? See a pattern here? There he meets some, some tent makers the name, by the name of Aquila and Priscilla. And he works with them, making tents. And then on the weekends, he's sharing the gospel to people. And at one point in Acts chapter 18, Paul got tired of the opposition, got tired of the abuse. And he said this, he said, your blood be on your own heads. I am innocent of it. From now on, I'm only going to the Gentiles. He got so tired of the abuse and rejection from, from his own people, from the Jewish people. They said, forget it, I'm done with you guys. Wipe my hands clean, I'm never talking to you guys again. I mean, how many of us ever said something like that, right? I'm never talking to that person ever again. I'm never. And what's funny to me is in the, in the very next verse, 
We see that Paul is, is sharing Christ with someone who lives right next door to the synagogue. He's like, I'm gonna show you, I'm not coming to you guys, I'm going to him. And he didn't go out of his way to preach to the Jews, but also he was still close and was preaching to the Jews. And in fact, I love what happens in verse nine. It says, one night the Lord spoke to Paul in a vision. He said, don't be afraid, do not be afraid. Keep on speaking, do not be silent. For I am with you and no one is going to attack you and harm you because I have many people in this city. So Paul stayed in Corinth for a year and a half, teaching them the word of God. Maybe that's why the, the books of First and Second Corinthians are so big as a letter, because he spent so much time there. He understood them. You see, God reminds Paul, don't be afraid. God reminds his children, don't be afraid. Why? Because he is with us. And so that leads me to the fourth point today. As we grow with the team, we are called to remember, remember that God is with you. Did you know that the phrase, do not be afraid or, or fear not, is stated 365 times in the Bible? Right? God knows we need a reminder daily to fear not, to not be afraid, to remember daily that we don't need to fear. Because why? Because God is with us. Where God calls us, God provides. Where God leads us, he's already been and he is there. What God is calling us to do, he equips us, he empowers us to do it. Not on our own because, see, God is with us. We're not alone. God is with us through his Holy Spirit. And not only that, but God surrounds us with fellow believers. Look around the room. Look at these people. God surrounds us with people to do his work. And as we wrap up, we come to the end of Acts chapter 18. We meet a man by the name of Apollos. And what we see is, is not someone else that Paul and Timothy and Silas and Luke are ministering to, but we see this couple that they met, Aquila and Priscilla, and this couple ministers to Apollos. They guide him, they, they teach him, they provide correction, and, and he receives it, and he continues to do great things. The team is continuing to grow. He's growing with the team, and as we see, we're, we're, we're not called to do this thing called life alone. God has called us to join his mission. And that mission that we know is to know Christ fully. And then for us to make Christ known, we're called to grow with the team through following the Holy Spirit, through ministering to people, through being ready, through remembering that God is, is with you because see, Jesus left heaven, right? He came to earth, he lived a perfect life so that he could die to take on the punishment our sins deserved. Jesus rose again, giving us victory over sin and death. And when Jesus went back to heaven, he sent the Holy Spirit to dwell within us, to dwell within all who would believe and receive him. And so now what? Now we live for him. Now we live our lives pointing people to Jesus. And so as we, we wrap up today, the, the big question I wanna ask you to ask yourself is now what? This is a question that's been on the screen, right, for so, for so long, now what? And see, this is something only you can answer for yourself because God is leading each of us. And yes, some of our things may look similar, but some of us are called to very different things. You know the what, you know, you know the so what, the why, and so now what? What do you do? What do you do with what you've read and, and what you've heard? Maybe here today you need to, to confess some sins, you need to profess with your mouth that you believe. You, maybe you need to take that step of faith and be baptized. Let us know, we'd love to help you do that. There's no greater thing you can do. And then ask, for some of you, maybe what, what, do I, what do I do with the hope that Jesus has given me? What do I do with that? Who's that one we've been, we've been talking about for so long, praying for your one, reaching out to your one? Who do you need to share the hope of Jesus with? Who do you need to work with? Who do you work with that you could show some love, joy, peace, and hope to? Ask yourself, what, what's the Holy Spirit calling me to do? What is, what is the Holy Spirit calling me to do? We all have a calling to point people to Christ, to make disciples who make disciples, but our callings, our jobs, the, the things that we do specifically, the people we're called to reach may not look like everybody else that we're supposed to reach out to. What or who is the Holy Spirit laying on your heart? Because he's calling you to minister to people where he's called you, where he's placed you. 
You ask yourself, who do I need to do life with so that together we can connect more people to Christ? See, we're not called or meant to do this thing on our own. Who can you partner with that will encourage you, that will strengthen you? Who can you partner with that will call you out when you need it? Who will weep with you when you weep? Who will we rejoice with you when you rejoice? You're like, man, I'm just, I'm just struggling to feel connected, to get connected with that person or multiple people. Well, have you, have you joined a rooted group? The newest session of Rooted kicked off this past Wednesday and, and it's not too late to join us on Wednesday nights at 6.30 p.m. right here. Maybe you've been through Rooted. Have you gotten connected to another group? Have you been a part of a connect group here? We have groups meeting almost every single night of the week here at Westbrook and, and we have groups for men, we have groups for women, we have mixed groups, couples, young adults, seniors. We have all kinds of different groups. We have people looking to start new groups and are currently working on a time and a place to meet. Seriously, open up that church center app It's okay, I told you it's in church. The pastor said it's okay, pull out your phone, pull up the church center app, click on the groups tab on the bottom right-hand side. Or if you're like, hey, you know, I'll just visit this later, write down westbrook.church slash groups. Check out the groups we have. Get connected, get involved. Get to know some people in this church. Get connected to people around you. Get to know, you'll be surprised that some of the people maybe that are around you that that have a heart and a desire and they don't know what to do with it and, and together we can do greater things. Don't try to do it all on your own because even the the great apostle Paul, he didn't do it on his own. He did it through the power of the Holy Spirit with people, growing with the team. Ask yourself this, who who do I need to minister to? Who am I being called to reach out to? You think about your family, your friends, your coworkers, your neighbors. Think about the stores and the restaurants and the coffee shops that you frequent. Who is there that could use some hope, the hope of Jesus Christ? As you're on your way doing whatever it is you're doing, how can you share the love of Jesus Christ? Who can you share the love of Jesus with? And then ask yourself this, what do I need to do to be ready to share the hope I have because of Jesus? Because see, sometimes we think in big, big scales, but you don't have to start big. Start with prayer. Start with an act of kindness. Start with getting to know somebody. Start with sharing your story. You know, what makes you think and talk and act differently? What makes you go to church? See, God is growing his team and he grows his team using the people on his team. And so I'm gonna close with this quote from Edward Everett Hale. He was an American a Unitarian minister. He was a writer, uh, inspired many by his story that is called 10 times one is 10. But he says this, he says, I'm only one, but I am one. I can't do everything, but I can do something. What I can do, I ought to do. And what I ought to do, by the grace of God, I will do. See, we can't do everything, but we can do what God has called us to do. And by the grace of God, we will do the work of God to reach people for God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your love. We thank you for the hope that we have through Jesus Christ. Lord, help us to remember these things. Help us to connect with others, to grow with the team. Lord, help us to know you more fully and to make you known to others. We love you. We give you thanks. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, we thank you for your spirit. We thank you for your presence here with us today. And God, I pray that as we pour out our praise and worship to you, that you would speak to our hearts. God, that you would continue the transformation of our minds. And God, that nothing else would be more important to us than our love and devotion to you. We love you today, God. In the name of Jesus, we pray and sing. Amen. I'm caught up in your presence. I just want to sit here at your feet. Caught up in this holy moment, I never want to leave. Oh, I'm not here for blessings, Jesus. You don't owe me. Anything that you can do 